truth. I think, therefore I am. Post-truth. I believe, therefore I'm right. In the final part of today's seminar, I want to share with you some fact-checking resources. It's really hard to know if what you just read is accurate. Did the president really say that? Is Elvis still alive? Does a story say a source is claiming something you just can't believe? Here are five resources where you can check the facts and some that specialize in checking facts on internet rumors. The first is PolitiFact. PolitiFact is perhaps the most recognized and respected fact-checking website on the internet. It rates the accuracy of claims by elected officials and others on its truthometer. You can check out PolitiFact at politifact.com. The Washington Post has a feature called the Fact Checker. It's a weekly review of what's true, false, or in-between in politics from the Post's famous fact-checking team. And it all has to do with those Pinocchios. You can go to WashingtonPost.com slash news slash fact dash checker. Next is a video about the Washington Post fact checker feature. When the Washington Post fact checker examined this claim, they gave it four Pinocchios. Four Pinocchios, which is the worst rating possible. In 2015 alone, without my even asking, you gave me no fewer than eight Pinocchios. The Pinocchios are an easy way for readers to understand our bottom line assessment of the accuracy of a claim. And we have Pinocchios to range from a Geppetto check mark, not a Pinocchio, but that means it's, it's factually accurate, all the way up to four Pinocchios, which are for Whoppers. Politicians are generally terrified of the Pinocchios. A quick response. I, I can't let that stand. She's been given four Pinocchios for that as well. And they gave uh, Schumer four, four Pinocchios. President Trump is an unusual politician in that he does not drop a false claim even though it has been fact-checked as false. And if he likes a particular thing that he says, he will keep saying it, not once, not twice, dozens upon dozens of times. The bottomless Pinocchio is when a politician refuses to drop a claim that has been fact-checked as three or four Pinocchios, keeps saying it over and over and over again so that it basically becomes disinformation, propaganda. It's said now that our economy is the strongest it's ever been in the history of our country. And except for one senator, who came into a room at 3 o'clock in the morning and went like that, we would have had health care, too. We need the wall. We've started building the wall. I will tell you, I've had uh, the head of U.S. Steel call me the other day, and he said, we're opening up six major facilities. Our country lost last year $817 billion in terms of deficit. We have $450 billion worth of things ordered from a very rich country. Saudi Arabia. There's no Russia. It was all made up by the Democrats. But the Mexican border is very unprotected by our laws. We have horrible, horrible, and very unsafe laws in the United States. False! Where are the fact checkers? Where are the fact checkers? Pinocchio! Snopes. Snopes is a fact-checking website. It has been described as a well-regarded reference for sorting out myths and rumors on the internet. It has also been seen as a source for validating and debunking urban legends and similar stories in American pop culture. Snopes.com. We already saw a little bit of the work that the News Literacy Project does. They are a nonpartisan national education nonprofit providing programs and resources for educators and the public to teach, learn, and share the abilities needed to be smart, active consumers of news and information, and equal and engaged participants in a democracy. Newslit.org. The Pointer Institute for Media Studies is a nonprofit journalism school 
and Research Organization located in St. Petersburg, Florida. The school is the owner of the Tampa Bay Times newspaper and the International Fact Checking Network and operates PolitiFact. Pointer.org. Let's talk a little bit about how to choose your news. How do you know what's happening in your world? The amount of information just a click away may be limitless, but the time and energy we have to absorb and evaluate it is not. All the information in the world won't be very useful unless you know how to read the news. To your grandparents, parents, or even older siblings, this idea would have sounded strange. Only a few decades ago, news was broad-based. Your choices were limited to a couple of general interest magazines and newspapers of record, and three or four TV networks, where trusted newscasters delivered the day's news at the same reliable time every evening. But the problems with this system soon became apparent as mass media spread. While it was known that authoritarian countries controlled and censored information, a series of scandals showed that democratic governments were also misleading the public, often with media cooperation. Revelations of covert wars, secret assassinations, and political corruption undermined public faith in official narratives presented by mainstream sources. This breakdown of trust in media gatekeepers led to alternative newspapers, radio shows, and cable news competing with the major outlets and covering events from various perspectives. More recently, the internet has multiplied the amount of information and viewpoints, with social media, blogs, and online video turning every citizen into a potential reporter. But if everyone is a reporter, nobody is, and different sources may disagree not only on opinions, but on the facts themselves. So how do you get the truth? or something close. One of the best ways is to get the original news unfiltered by middlemen. Instead of articles interpreting a scientific study or a politician's speech, you can often find the actual material and judge for yourself. For current events, follow reporters on social media. During major events such as the Arab Spring or the Ukrainian protests, newscasters and bloggers have posted updates and recordings from the midst of the chaos. Though many of these later appear in articles or broadcasts, keep in mind that these polished versions often combine the voice of the person who was there with the input of editors who weren't. At the same time, the more chaotic the story, the less you should try to follow it in real time. In events like terrorist attacks and natural disasters, today's media attempts continuous coverage even when no reliable new information is available, sometimes leading to incorrect information or false accusations of innocent people. It's easy to be anxious in such events, but try checking for the latest information at several points in the day rather than every few minutes, allowing time for complete details to emerge and false reports to be refuted. While good journalism aims for objectivity, media bias is often unavoidable. When you can't get the direct story, read coverage in multiple outlets, which employ different reporters and interview different experts. Tuning into various sources and noting the differences lets you put the pieces together for a more complete picture. It's also crucial to separate fact from opinion. Words like think, likely, or probably mean that the outlet is being careful, or worse, taking a guess. And watch out for reports that rely on anonymous sources. These could be people who have little connection to the story, or have an interest in influencing coverage, their anonymity making them unaccountable for the information they provide. Finally, and most importantly, try to verify news before spreading it. While social media has enabled the truth to reach us faster, it's also allowed rumors to spread before they can be verified, and falsehoods to survive long after they've been refuted. So before you share that unbelievable or outrageous news item, do a web search to find any additional information or context you might have missed and what others are saying about it. Today we are more free than ever from the old media gatekeepers who used to control the flow of information. But with freedom comes responsibility, the responsibility to curate our own experience and ensure that this flow does not become a flood, leaving us less informed than before we took the plunge.
And the final resource I want to share with you comes from Ad Fantas Media. Their mission is to make news consumers smarter and news media better. They analyze the news for bias and reliability using a rigorous methodology and a politically balanced team of analysts. The name of their company is Latin for To the Source. One of the best things that they produce is this media bias chart. I actually use this quite a bit. I have it on my desktop, and I refer to it quite often. Why? As a reminder that I make sure I get my news and information from reliable, trusted sources. Now, that being said, I make sure that I get news from the right, I get news from the left, but I try to stay down the middle as much as possible. The news organizations in the middle and towards the top are well-respected, reliable, trustworthy fact-reporting resources. And as you skew to the left, you can see CNN, Huffington Post, Slate, and the news starts to get a little bit unbalanced. It gets a little bit too left in its reporting. And just the opposite, New York Post, Fox News, Breitbart, these organizations are far right. So the information you're going to get is mainly opinion. The most trusted, reliable towards the top, the yellow area is kind of mixed reliability. As you move down the chart and go left and right, you can see that what starts to happen is that the reporting becomes unfair, becomes misleading, is inaccurate, and in many cases, fabricated. At the end of the day, what does it come down to? It comes down to responsibility. And much of that responsibility falls on us. Because seeking the truth requires effort. And you need to do your part when you share that information. So when you do, make sure before you share it, is this fact or opinion? Don't be lazy. Do your homework. You might have to dig a little deeper and go beyond just the headline to find out the truth. Make sure you're getting balanced reporting. Again, I try to get my news from many sources. AP News, CBS, Fox, CNN, Wall Street Journal, The Hill. That way, I'm able to make sure that what I'm getting is accurate across all platforms. And one of the toughest things is admitting when you're wrong. It's okay if you're wrong. Own up to it. Lastly, keep an open mind. When it comes to discussions or sharing information online, make sure you listen to the other person. This can be tough because many of us are set in our ways. We believe what we want to believe. But if we keep an open mind, we can engage with others and learn. For more information on group or private in-home instruction, please visit my website, danielteaches.com, or you can call me at 585-902-8450, or email me at daniel at danielteaches.com.